Hello, my name is Robert Dean Steele, and this is your daily Bible class or your commentary on the Bible. Well, you know we love to open our time and Bible studies with prayer. So let's do that right now. Heavenly Father, we thank you today for the Word of God. We thank you that, Lord, not only can it change our lives, but also as well, Lord, the lives of those that we love. Now we ask your blessing upon the Word in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, it's now we're in Mark chapter 11. Today we're looking at the triumphant entry. So it says, now they came to Jerusalem. Of course, they were on Bethpage, which was on the Mount of Olives. Now he sent two of his disciples, just a quick notation. The Mount of Olives is a escarpment that runs north and south just east of the city of Jerusalem um, with the Kidron Valley in between. So Jesus sends two of his disciples to the village opposite, and he says, there you'll find a colt, uh, one that has never been sat on. Loose it and bring it to me. Now, if anyone says to you, why are you doing that? The Lord has need of it, and immediately he will send it here. So they went their way and found the colt tied by a door outside on the street, and they loosed it. Now, someone who was standing close by said, what are you doing uh, loosing that colt? And they spoke to them just as Jesus commanded, and they let them go. Isn't this very, very wonderful? How the Lord can always go ahead of us and create and uh, make circumstances and make things happen that could only be supernatural. Well, they brought the colt to Jesus, threw their garments on it, and he sat on it. And many spread their garments on the road, and others cut down leafy branches from the trees and spread them before them on the road. So this is where we get the idea of Palm Sunday. Very exciting to see how that Jesus, who would, had such a calming effect on that colt that uh, he could ride him with no trouble. Now, I know that that's a miracle because I have had the privilege of being thrown from green, broke, or unbroke animals. So they, they, they cut down the, the, the leaves and the branches, and that's, where, of course, where we get Palm Sunday. And those who are walking before and also following said, Hosanna! Now that means basically praise the Lord. And they said, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Now they may not have fully understood or comprehended what they were saying, but they were heralding someone that they believed that was going to change society. They believed that Jesus was that political Messiah that was going to kick out the, the uh, Romans and establish a mess messianic and spiritual kingdom on the earth. Then they said, blessed is he who comes of our father David. They knew that Jesus was of the lineage of David, or the Messiah was, and so that's why they said they were claiming that wonderful promise from the book of Psalms, uh, and uh, Psalm 148, verse number one. And they said, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. So they're they're basically praising God, thanking the Lord. And of course, uh, this is the same crowd that a week later would put him to death. But at this moment, they were jubilant. They were uh, they were caught up in the moment of this wonderful young rabbi was now going to usher in a kingdom. So Jesus went to Jerusalem. Now listen to this. He went and looked around the temple, and when he looked and saw that the hour was late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. So Jesus comes into Jerusalem. He comes down to the Kidron Valley, goes up into the Temple Mount, looks around, but it was already late. So he heads back across the Kidron Valley and spends the night on the Mount of Olive in the village of Bethany. Next morning, they come from Bethany, and he was very hungry. And so he looked uh, afar he saw a fig tree with leaves. So he walks up to it, but he didn't find any leaves on it, for it wasn't the season of figs. His response was, let no one eat fruit from you ever again, and his disciples heard it. So Jesus walks up to a fruit uh, fig tree, 
sees that it's in uh, leaf, but it doesn't have any figs. And so he does something very, very strange. He curses the fig tree. Now, we're going to discover later on that that tree withered up and died, and Jesus would use it as an example of faith. Now, he goes into Jerusalem, and Jesus went into the temple. Now, remember, the day before, he went into the temple, kind of looked around, saw what was going on, and formulated a plan in his mind the next day. He goes into the temple. He begins to drive out those who had bought and sold in the temple. Now, that was, of course, wrong. And overturn the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. So what they had done as they had turned it into a place of of business instead of a place of worship. And he did not allow anyone to carry their wares into the temple. So here are some people coming in and they're carrying their business. They're conducting their business in the court of the Gentiles. And uh, so Jesus basically drives out the money changers. And then he says, you guys can't come in here. And he keeps them, the other people from coming in. Then he taught them, it is written, or is it not written, my house shall be called a house of prayer to all nations, but you've made it a den of thieves. So we get the motivation here of why Jesus did what he did. He did it because he saw that they were changing the uh, house that he had made into a house of iniquity or a den of thieves. And the scribes and chiefs Priests heard it and sought that they might destroy him, but they feared him because they were astonished at his teaching. And when the evening came, he went out of the city. So that's what happened in those two day stretches, okay? This event happened on Monday, okay? Jesus went into the uh, temple, or I should say the um, Palm Sunday, and then this was the Monday. We're getting into now the last few uh, days and events of Jesus's life before his passion. So that's where we find ourselves tomorrow. We're going to talk about the power of faith and also the necessity of forgiveness. That's all tomorrow. Here uh, on your, <laughs> I should say, I was going to say your radio station, but no, it's not your radio station. Anyway, here uh, on the, uh, uh, what am I trying to say? I am trying to tell you that this is your commentary of the Bible and your daily Bible class. Had a blonde moment there. You have yourself a great and godly day.